in this episode, my friend Jordan and I discuss cryptocurrencies, Christianity, banking, the Great Reset. I mean, we almost touched some third rails here and had fun doing it. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Banking with Life podcast. I'm your host, James Nethery. And as usual, I'm always excited whenever I have clients and and guests on. And uh, I'm excited today to have Jordan on. He's a young man, a stellar young man. Uh, in my opinion, and as you listen to him over the next you know, several minutes, I think you'll agree he's a pretty cool guy. And so he's graciously uh, said yes, he'd love to be a guest. And, um, and so, Jordan, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for good coming. Good morning. Good morning. I've got my glass of tea here. I'm ready to go. Have some fun. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, kind of what I'd like to do is just you know, I want you to, I mean, I just want to have its unscripted conversation, but, you know, I think there's great value uh, to the listener, whomever they may be, hearing people uh, and, and their, like, how you became exposed to the idea of becoming your own banker, you know, the thought process that you went through. Oh, yeah. And uh, why did, how in the world did you ever get to the decision to let some underwriter you know, 2,000 miles away, go through your medical questions and all. You know what I mean? Just the right. the whole so process of that. It started out, I was really, I was a track star, right? And I know what you're thinking. Does he still have it? The answer is yes. <laughs> okay. I was a track star. I went to college for, uh, you know, on a, on a scholarship for track and field. And I got there and I was just thinking like, why am I learning about Moctezuma again? what am I doing here in, in terms of I'm learning English again, learning all these things again. I don't know what I want my major to be because I don't know what I want to do for 40 years for someone else. Oh. So that was the first sort of um, catalyst, I suppose. I failed out of college. I'm talking 1.2 GPA. Oh, you weren't even trying then. I wasn't. It was difficult to get motivated when there's no um, carrot at the end of the stick. Yeah. You know what I mean? For me, working 40 years, putting funds into a qualified retirement plan so I can penny pinch my way through maybe my last 15 years wasn't a carrot on the end of the stick. I know that's heavy. That's heavy. I know. I love it. I love it. So, again, I ended up failing out and I had to work this warehouse job. I moved back home, uh, back home to Canyon Lake, worked at the warehouse for your favorite Texas grocery company. And it got to the point where I was waking up every day very early and, and look, I look, I don't want to do this at all, you know, for another year, let alone the rest of my life. So I knew I had to make some changes. Um, so that was when essentially I started listening to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. The first one was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? It's almost everybody's first financial mindset book. Second one was Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going on and on and on. And I knew that I couldn't do everything traditionally because I saw what people were working, you know, at the warehouse, 40 years old, 50 years old. And I said, um, you know, I, I just do not want to be them. So that's to say, long story short, fast forward years later, I'm still on my quest to embark and find more uh, uh, avenues. And I looked up velocity banking. Velocity Bank was the first thing because I have two houses now. I was like, hey, how could I pay down my mortgage quicker? And that's kind of what led me to, to IBC and you, actually. So, Perk, you just <laughs> ran across a lot of videos. I know that, you know, our videos and other videos, they all come up on the suggested, you know, viewing on YouTube. So maybe something like that happened. The algorithm saved me. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. I appreciate you saying that because I believe the algorithm, when people are paying attention and hear the truth um, or can recognize the truth when they hear it, there is some salvation in that. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. So you have two houses. You want to talk about that, any? I mean, you're sure, I mean, so I don't want to. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud for you. You're a young man and you own two houses. I mean, come on. That didn't happen by accident. It didn't, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know if that's an achievement necessarily okay. in itself, because um, I, I enlisted into the military, uh, as we were talking before the show, 
but mostly for the benefits. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest. It wasn't <laughs> that I wanted to save the, the world or anything. It's because I wanted the, the, the step, you know, up the ladder, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I got two houses with the VA home loan. And in and of themselves, I don't think that's a great thing. But uh, I think I'm going to do well with them in terms of, of renting them. So. I got it. Well, your money's got to reside somewhere. So, you know, you got some equity and some real estate. Wait a minute. Let me see. Interest rates are lower than they've ever been in recorded history. Our lifetime, my lifetime, probably, I don't care how old you are if you're listening, lowest interest rates in your lifetime. So, with interest rates so low, money being printed out of thin air, you know, the causes uh some price increase somewhere right real estate stock market i don't know that's exactly where it's going you know you talk about uh what is it about 30 well if you include this 1.9 trillion um coming up here about 35 percent of all the currency in circulation ever has been printed off the last 13 months <clears throat> yep oh and wait so, they're, gonna, they're probably gonna wake up next week and quit printing money or digits right oh sure there's, all of a sudden, there's gonna there everybody's gonna get religion. It's like, oh my gosh, this is not even, you know, right. This is not. We shouldn't Let's not do this raise job. the debt ceiling anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, too, before the show, you, uh, you want to talk about your future here in the next couple of years, or can you sure. talk about that? Yeah. No, absolutely. So I'm going to Sicily. I'm going to Sicily here in the next hopefully a couple of weeks. It's just waiting on that sofa stamp. Um, and then what, after what that, is that? What is that? So please? status of forces agreement. Okay. Uh, people call it a sofa agreement, but it's redundant. Right. But hey, <laughs> um, so waiting on that. And essentially, I, I vowed, you know, now that I've seen how income taxes are spent, right? Talking about, we think that it's it's going to build roads and, and schools. Yeah. But really, it's paying off their principal and interest on those treasury bonds purchased by the Federal Reserve private bank with zero dollars in their account. They write a check and it should bounce. You know what I mean? So, well, if they had um, to live by the rules that <clears throat> that we live by, like what reality is, yeah, right, right. So I've promised myself that I would not <sighs> work for that. So if I am working, it's going to be overseas. That way, I can get that tax free first. Uh, I think this year is one hundred seven or one hundred nine. So perfect. Yeah, so. <laughs> and then. Uh, let me see. Sicily, that country, I mean, has uh, banking agreements with the U.S. So, you know, you can practice the infinite banking concept overseas. I mean, you're a U.S. citizen. You were here when you applied for and received and had issue of your uh, policy. So when you travel anywhere around the world, you know, as long as you're in a country that is uh, a tier one or a tier, an A tier country with right. the U.S. banking system, there'll be no problems. But you know, don't go to Russia or North Korea and expect <laughs> you know, gotcha. work with right. the uh, U.S. banking institutions. Uh, right. So, how long are you going to be over there? And uh, you know, I expect about uh, a couple of years. A couple of years. I don't expect to to have to work for very long, to be honest with you. Um, but definitely a couple of years. And then I plan on moving to maybe Colombia or just somewhere where, because I'm a dancer. I love to dance. So oh, yeah. somewhere where I'm treated well, you know, there's a great YouTuber is, is uh, he's a travel YouTuber and he says something so simple, but I thought it was so profound. It says, he says, go where you're treated best. Mm-hmm. I like it. And I said, well, you know what? You're exactly right. I am no longer treated best here in the country that I love, which is a heartbreaker. It's so heartbreaking, mm. but it's, it's true. I got to go and take my household ultimately where I'm treated best. I got it. So have you been to Colombia? I have not been to Mexico. Haven't been to Colombia yet, uh, but I'm excited to visit, see if I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? I'm learning. Okay. Aprendo. Si, si. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you speak uh, Italian? No, oh, I'm going to struggle with that so much, James. I've been procrastinating. Listen, you're a young man. That's exciting to travel the world like that. Have you been out of the U.S.? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well, you just said you've been to Mexico. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and did, uh, it's going to be rough at first, but it'll be nice. Yeah. Did you get sent around the world with Uncle Sam, the military? I sure did not. 
I got stationed at Lackland and I was deployed in place. <laughs> deployed in place the entire time. So 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 during that service, during your service, I mean, you decided that maybe you weren't being treated as well as you could and you didn't like the way your tax dollars were being sent. So it sounds like there was a bit of an awakening there. Is that fair to say? There was, absolutely. It mostly started, you know, I, I came in knowing sort of that I didn't want to work you know, the, the, the traditional rat race American lifestyle. However, it really clicked once I learned how the dollar was made. Once I learned how the Federal Reserve, again, purchases that U.S. Treasury bond, you know, through its intermediaries with nothing that completely changed my life and yeah I, so i couldn't work over you know uh stateside anymore had to work overseas and really had to change the way i banked because there's no way now that i learned what is it dodd frank how the dodd frank rule essentially allows banks to bail themselves out we're no longer going to have bailouts we're having bail ins <laughs> yeah. with people's deposits yeah, i said well, there's who, no way who reads 1600 pages or whatever it is right uh, exactly I, I call it the dodd frankenstein act is what oh, i call my it goodness yeah, yeah. got to pass it to find out what's in it exactly yeah so now the uh the uh depositors of a bank are the unsecured creditors of the institution yep so you know we won't be bailed out quote unquote the banks are always bailed out period period but how are they going to do it ah, you know they're just might, uh, you know rely on the unsecured uh creditors of the financial institution you the depositor so don't worry james they're going to give you stock in compensation <laughs> right so, so have solace in that uh, i do yeah I'm, i uh I made a statement the other day. I say it all the time, but at the end of the world, you know, Armageddon comes around. There's going to be three things left, Twinkies, um, <laughs> you know, cockroaches, and mutual life insurance companies, right? Yeah. Um, and somebody commented or replied or commented on that, on, you know, on my statement and said, oh, James, you forgot the IRS. They're going to be around oh, at Armageddon too. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Jeez. All right, so um, how did you how did you discover you know how did you uh, begin or get exposed to the idea that the banking system was not quite what you thought it was? Well, in '08 was sort of my very first sort of awakening into the inner workings of governments around the world, particularly ones that uh, organizations that have the world, word world in them. Right. Mm. We're talking World Economic Forum, even IMF, Klaus. things like that. Yeah. Klaus, our boy yeah. Klaus Schwab. Yeah. That's right. You will own nothing. And be happy. And like it. And yeah, you're going to like it. Yeah, yeah. So 08 was when I first kind of woke up to that. And I'll tell you what, you, you know this, but it gets really lonely once you know sort of a lot what's going on because people would rather oftentimes stick their head in the sand um, than actually take a good solid look into that. So I've been lonely since 08, been a little lonely since 08, <laughs> um, knowing all that. And yeah, that really led us to, to IBC, which is why I think a lot of the people, why your community is so high quality is because it takes a certain humility to say, hey, you know what? I was wrong with you know maybe what my father taught me or what my grandfather taught me i was wrong for all these years up until now i have to change the way that i think and adopt this this new thinking that takes a certain amount of humility and wisdom to be able to do that that's very well said i agree with that very well said i agree yeah. and in addition to that <clears throat> i find that most if not all of our clients have had some kind of a negative experience with either the bank, third party lenders, credit scores, whatever the case may be. Like in business, uh, you know, the all American business person might have had a very close brush with bankruptcy a time or two, or 
you know, loans are being called and all loans are callable. I get it. We all get to hear about and talk about and some of you may even own these non-recourse loans. That is not the norm, right? So whenever we sign our John Henry to that agreement, whatever we're borrowing, whomever we're borrowing from, um, you know, and just even the mere the depth of what really is going on whenever you sign your name on a loan, you know, you're pledging all of your assets that you have. Now, I don't care what you're borrowing, how much you're borrowing, you're pledging your assets, it's over collateralized, and then you're pledging your future production, your time, effort, energy, you know, that you exchange for an income. I mean, that's you know, when you think about it, it's like, my gosh, that's not even fair. It's not right. Um, it's not correct. But we don't really think about it that often until there's until something does go wrong. Right. Right. There's no assets are being exchanged until something goes wrong. Then the lenders show up and start devaluing your your assets. And exactly. So I'm just saying that a lot of business people have had experience uh and it's not all negative, you know, when you can borrow money at one or two percent and go, you know, produce, you know, income yeah. or assets. I'm not. And your balance gets inflated away. It's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. You but, know? And two, look, we did a we did an episode. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Uh, white coding, but a uh, misdiagnosis of IBC, a two part right. thing. Ryan Griggs and I did on uh, the white code investor. And I've mentioned it, but not in those episodes, but this guy was disparaging the infinite banking concept, right? What's new? What's original there? But uh, he says that the people that, that practice this are typically, they're also conspiracy theorists, you know? What a compliment. <laughs> I like to say we're students of history. I That's mean, exactly it. If you don't have a certain level of skepticism right uh, if you're not a certain level of incredulous about your government you have not you just simply haven't looked at history right it's about all it is right. you know all right so look you um you discovered that the banking system might not be what you thought it was and that led mm -hmm. you down your, your, an educational process a searching um then it leads you to different things on youtube i'm assuming youtube or social media right YouTube. Um, okay and man there's a ton of stuff out on youtube and a lot of it's really good and you know some of it i think is not worth it and i think anyway um, right there's a lot of so you got to weed through a lot of junk sometimes to get to the truth yes right yes and it, but it's worth the effort um and so then you you know you discovered the infinite banking concept you know, you came around to us, which I'm appreciative. And then has, uh, how long have you been, how long has this search been? You know, how many years are we talking about? Oh, as soon as I found IBC, I'm talking, I, I called y'all the week after. Wow. But in terms of the search for freedom, I'll, I guess the system, whatever you want to call that, I kind of don't like, like that word, but it's true. We're sort of all victims of this system in a way. Um, but that's been since 08. That's been since 08. Okay. So, and so from 08 to like the last couple of years is, I mean, how long have we known each other? You know? Right. Uh, I mean, shoot one year now. Okay. About like a year. one year now. Yes. So that's, that's uh, a pretty lengthy time period, you know, from. It is. Yeah. I it mean, it's, whenever you know whenever you do hear the truth recognize the truth i mean i commend you for reaching out quickly the next week that's good right? yeah <laughs> um, it takes a lot of sifting i'll tell you what i've said this before but the level of discernment needed in the modern day in this age of information right which has turned to the age of perhaps misinformation and then people faction themselves and turn it to the age of affirmation so now you can't convince them otherwise. The level of discernment necessary is astronomical. So as soon as you find it, you know. But until then, it's a lot of sifting, a lot of sifting. Financial entertainers, they sound great with some things. And you figure out that other things that they say, maybe not so much. So 
takes yeah. time. Yeah, that's well said again. You know, um, there's a lot of disinformation, misinformation. Some of it's on purpose. Some of it's out of ignorance, maybe. Some of it's out of excitement. You know, I'm not saying it's all negative, but it's not all positive. You know, that's for sure. And then, Absolutely. You know, sifting through that is it's a challenge. You know, unlearning what you know we've been taught or told is right is it is very humbling you know it's it's humbling if you believed one thing and you discover that's not true i mean there's that's a like a gut check you know that'll test your character it is it's like an obstacle course where the banks are throwing these different distractions and obstacles in your way one big distraction is, is the division currently you know within our, our country and I, I call it a uh, it's a psyop you know what i mean it's a psyop but i no called question. it a, a where's waldo psyop because if i told you james nethery hey look at this photo you know this busy photo this where's waldo portrait find me the dog that's lifting its leg on the fire hydrant you're no longer gonna see that portrait you're going to go zoom in, right? You're zooming in your perspective to go search for the dog on the fire hydrant. And that's exactly what's happening to us. So we're told that we're victims of not the banking system, but we're victims of this person, our fellow American, or this person, this color. Guess what? Now we zoomed in and we lose perspective completely at who's really oppressing us, who's really been victimizing us for decades. Yep, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. And so um, your your education is continuing. You didn't just like run into the the banking, some truths about banking and then IBC, Velocity Banking and us. I mean, you're what are you studying now? I mean, how's your education? What, where's, what's it taking you? Where's it taking you besides Sicily? <laughs> the the Great Reset is what I've been essentially studying lately. Because I think that that's a massive opportunity. I think the largest wealth transfer in human history is is upon us, perhaps even this year, maybe next year. Um, because I think they're using, you know, the current sickness as an opportunity, right? Klaus Schwab loves that word. This is a great opportunity yep. for me to push my agenda, right. right? So I've been really studying the World Economic Forum, IMF, Christine Lagarde, uh, those those types of people, Bank of International Settlements. I've been eyeing them like a hawk because of what they're trying to do. And I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but they're trying to bring about a, a CBDCs, right? Central Bank Digital Currencies. They want that this year or next because they're saying that cash is dirty, right? Cash is not clean. We got to get rid of cash. So that way, you know, I can't sell you my fridge downstairs, my French fridge, you know, for 400 bucks cash and, uh, you know, maybe not pay taxes. They That keeps them up at night. Oh, that keeps them up at night. So everything pretty soon here, I'd say in the next two years for sure, is going to be digital um, digital currencies. Well, when you say psyop earlier, I believe it is psyop. I believe the, uh, you know, and I know I'm going to get flayed for this, but uh, it's okay. I can take correction from men or people that I love and respect. But I think Bitcoin is a psyop. I think yeah. it has been a psyop. I think and, so too. Uh, oh, good, perfect. I think, I think that so too. it, you know, it is a matter of time if they could. Uh, you know, it's like there's there's a never ending greed for these people. You know, I I heard I think last week or so that Bill Gates is now the far, the largest farmland owner yep. in America. That's right. And uh, now wait a minute. Now he wants you. You know, I'm a meat eater. I'm a carnivore. I'm a herbivore. Actually, I'm overweight for a reason. I love food. I'm I'm all American. You know, <laughs> high cholesterol, blah blah, high blood pressure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not that unhealthy. I'm just saying no, I'm American. You're not. But yeah. they're they're creating this synthetic meat, yes, right. And it's like, right. well, why are you buying all the all the farmland? You know, I get it. Farming and ranching is different. I get it. But, um, wow, why? That's a, why, you, right? Why yeah. a computer engineer? And yeah. you don't have to answer those questions. But it does. It definitely 
you know, you have to ask those. And the guys of climate change, the guys in the auspice of same people, sustainability, same people. Right? Yep. It's branding, right? You're a salesman, you know, marketing, you know, branding when you see it. And that's branding. So these different words, sustainability, um, you know, we got to be a, uh, you know, conscious of the environment. We got all these things are, are definitely again a psyop. Yep. Going to Bitcoin itself. <laughs> that was my first love back in 2017. That was my first love. I thought Bitcoin was the thing. It's hey, death to the banks, decentralized. Yeah. And after a while, I was like, you know what? I Bitcoin is really centralized. China <laughs> owns like <laughs> China mines almost, you know, over 51%, you know, the, and that's one. And once the CCP decides they want to do something with Bitcoin, I think that's a done deal. But additionally, Bitcoin really does not have utility. What? It doesn't have utility. Oh my gosh. Initially, you know, it's supposed to be this payment thing. Like, Hey, I can send James this for, to buy his cup of coffee, just send him some Bitcoin. And the technology has gotten so slow, you know, Bitcoin's gotten long in the tooth. The, the transaction speeds are slow. They're expensive. Now it's a store of value. Yeah, right. But why? Yeah. Well, you can still send James Bitcoin if you wish. He does not okay. send Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. You know, Christine, you mentioned Christine Legrand. Uh, you know, do you know anything about her and her history? Her father, you know, her grandfather, oh, and things like that. Hey, no. keep, yeah, yeah. Keep digging. Keep keep digging. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Uh, Very. Yeah. And then, okay, so so the future, you know, you think things are going to go digital. Yeah. Um, and then you also use the word opportunity in there. Where do you see the opportunity for yourself? Right. So. Everything's going to transition. So we're talking about what the, the derivatives market, I think the last time I checked is $1.3 quadrillion. I think that's a little low. By, okay. By hundreds. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So. And I mean, it depends on where you get your information, right? I mean, I've seen right. a couple of years right. ago, a couple of eggheads calculated the, the uh, derivatives worldwide and it was just staggering. Mind right. So you're talking about the repositories of money, currency, right? The repositories of all, all the currency in the world, the central banks, switching and migrating to a new system. So therein lies the opportunity. If you can position yourself within the either the infrastructure of the new system, right, the, wor- the roads, um, things like that, to so be able to toll the roads, for, you know, for example, then you can make staggering amounts of gains from that transition. There's going to be, again, quadrillions of dollars flowing into this new CBDC-based infrastructure and this new digital currency. So uh, do we system. need to get a job there? I mean, what do you, you know, how, how are you going to tell? I mean, I'm just asking. I, I like, know. personally, I like the digital currency called XRP. Yep. Um, and essentially, if you look at Brad Garlinghouse, who's the CEO of Ripple, who's created that digital currency, he's brushing shoulders in there with Christine Lagarde. He's, he's in there with these bankers time after time again. And what you see now is that these CBDCs are using the XRP ledger. I'm sorry, these central banks are using the XRP ledger on a private system. So that's the thing. They don't want their public, you know, their their transactions to be public on the public ledger, so they don't use the XRP that us plebs use, right? They have their own private XRP ledgers within themselves, and then essentially have these garden walls, and the regular XRP is the intermediary, the neutral bridge asset between these uh, central banks. So, right now, you know, if I want to send a million dollars to London, the fastest way is for me to get in a plane with a million dollars on a pallets of cash and fly to London in 2021. So that system is changing. You know, automated clearinghouse and Swift, mm-hmm. they're getting upgraded and it's going to be via, in my opinion, XRP. Well, I have a, and I appreciate that. I have a, I have a question. I wonder if all the uh, sheiks over there in the Middle East, like 
you know, in Baghdad, Afghanistan. And I mean, I don't want to be deplatformed, but I think it's a matter of time. So that's why we're moving to Rumble and Bit Shoot. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I have a client, <clears throat> um, have had a client a long time. He's still a client and a friend. He was, uh, and I won't mention any names, but he was a uh, flight engineer. Mm-hmm. The military C 130s. Nice. Right? Around the clock flights of more than one squadron taking hundred pallets full of hundred dollar bills over to Iran and Afghanistan. Yeah. Wow. So I wonder my question is I wonder if they have XRP over there in the <laughs> deserts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a great question. I know that uh Japan definitely does. Japan's using that for uh, transfers to Singapore. They have like a, a pilot, they call it, they pilot pilot systems. Kuwait has one to send capital to Jordan. There's all these different central banks who are using the patented ODL, which is on-demand liquidity. Essentially, through the digital currency, it's released, the value is released through the escrow at the same exact time on both ends to where a transaction never fails Mm -hmm. and the payment resolves within three seconds. So you're talking about the capital sitting in Nostro accounts, the the Nostro Vostro, all that liquidity is freed up now and you now have a globalized system in the internet of value. Mm -hmm. And you know, globalization can't happen without, you know, a globalized transfer of, (coughs) of capital. Yeah, it's already happened. We're just like making it more efficient. Exactly. Uh, and more profitable for them. I like that ODL, on demand liquidity. That's right. You know, I love that. So how does you how how does you how how does you well, how do you foresee yourself integrating, you know, becoming your I mean you're you're buying dividend paying whole life insurance and you're That's paying right. with, you know, US dollars or digits, you know. How uh, that's right. Just, how do you, you know, expand on that? How do, how do you see that? How do you incorporate that with this, you know, potential of uh, becoming completely digital in the next couple of years? I mean, because people often, you know, I hear and uh, answer the question of, well, what happens if there's a currency replacement, the currency collapse or the markets collapse? So, you know, how do you a forward thinking young man? <clears throat> I'm thinking outside of the box and you know how do you integrate that that's a great question I've often kind of wondered that myself but I, I do think that we're going to a sort of US dollar coin um, built potentially on you know the stellar lumens the stellar blockchain as well as Solana Algorand um, I think one other that I'm forgetting now how that works as far as like let's say va disability right how are they going to pay me my va disability on this new system i think they'll figure it out right even in uh in russia i mean the the soviet union people were still getting their pensions were they free freer than we exactly (laughs) they were still getting their pensions you know but it wasn't worth much Mm -hmm. so we're going to still get paid it's just it depends on how much you think that currency will be worth but i do think that there's a new valuation coming so a new Bretton woods type of moment how that would look i couldn't tell you i do think that definitely like what you're saying it, you know at the end of the world mutual life is still going to be a thing and i would much rather have the ability to access that capital through my own private contract than go beg the the banks for it at that point yeah. So the Brenton Woods Agreement, 1944, after the uh, all of Europe was destroyed, um, you know, and needing to be rebuilt, America shows up and it's like, oh, you know, we got to get completely off the gold standard. The U.S. dollar is going to be the world reserve currency. And what are these countries that were just decimated? Europe, Japan. I mean, what are, what are they going to say? No, Uncle Sam, that's a bad idea. We're not going to do that. So... There was really a currency reset, and I know most people listening know what the Bretton Woods Agreement is or was right. and what it did. But if you don't, you have an opportunity to uh, learn what that was. Um, That's why I love your Fruits, Fruits of Graph series. Mm-hmm. I watched that and then read the book. Incredible. That Wayne Incredible. Jet. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm surprised that uh, it's just a matter of time. I believe I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong before things like that are deplatformed. You know, because you, the truth 
is the enemy. You know? That's right. So, you know, it's. I'm glad you said that. I appreciate that. I think Wayne Jett's a very intelligent man and educated and so well researched. Yes, yeah, that's that's right up my alley. I was listening to that and it's like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. You know, I, I typically when I read books like that, that I, mm-hmm. I count the number of pages that, that, that are documented in footnotes. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the number of footnotes, pages of footnotes and documentation, but it was, I mean, 44 Staggering. pages. Yeah. 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 It's it's incredible. That's a great book. People definitely should check that out. Perfect. We'll put that in the in the link below um, because I agree they should. And then there's a series in the series that you mentioned, you know, shouldn't shouldn't replace a thorough reading of the book, you know. No, for someone that struggles with reading comprehension like myself, though, it really helped to either watch the series first, then read the book and then potentially go back and watch the series again. Something like that, because then it uh, makes that correlation between I'm an audio visual learner. So it made that correlation and made the reading easier for me. Sure. No, I agree. It's, it's a, I mean, that's a tome. That's a big, thick book, you know, and it, yes. And none of us have an uber amount of time laying around, you know, it's hard to carve out the time to read. And sometimes I'm just saying, but I agree with you. We all learn, you know, visually, audio, kinesthetic, you know, I mean, yeah. Um, learning with multiple media is good. So I, bottom line is though, it, and it frustrates me to see I'm a Christian and it frustrates me to see a lot of Christians not thinking that this is not war Mm. and it is, this is war. Well, these are our brothers and sisters that haven't read history. Yes, but we need to not be so um, passive in that, uh, you know, for instance, I was in the military, right? So let's say if I'm at war, I'm in a battle, and instead of holding my post, fighting the enemy, engaging the enemy, I pull out my phone and I wire transfer all my funds to them and then go out and let myself get captured. That's the T word. That's treason, right? That's, that's not good. I feel like a lot of Christians are unknowingly doing exactly that by continuing to participate in this banking system. And that's, that's heavy right there. That is. But you talk about the horrible things that happen in this world, things that we don't even know, right? There's people born that we don't even know are born, right? Within these certain circles, where does that funding come from? You know, the, the guy who had the island, the private island, where does this funding come from? You yeah. see where it comes from. It comes from Bank and all this nasty stuff. So as Christians... We got to, and I don't know, I'll preach to the choir here. We got to wake up. We got to f- engage the enemy by getting off of their their system. I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, you, you've, I mean, you've got to do what you can. I believe that we're all uh, responsible, you know, to do our part. And our part may be completely different from one another. But um, if you have talents and you have knowledge, you should share it, in my opinion, right? So I don't have to agree with you completely. You don't have to agree with me completely. But, you know, if you're a Christian and I'm a Christian, it's like there's a basis of agreement right there that can be built upon. Right. And then we should be, uh, in my opinion, aware, like you spoke to earlier how one group whatever they are whomever they are is pitted against each other so you got this big mosaic and when you're told to focus in on this is your enemy or this is the problem this is your problem and you're a victim because of this then you focus in on that mosaic looking for waldo or the dog you know that's hiking his leg as you referenced earlier it it we do lose perception of the big picture of what's really going on and you're complacent in that you have a part in that if you don't um if you're not aware that you can be led down the path to focus on this at the exclusion of the larger picture you know you're not uh i mean that can't happen without you participating in that does that make sense you can't it's not like you're you're unknowingly manipulated. There's so much information out in the big wide world today, and I'm not saying it's all true or it's all good or it's all bad. I'm just saying that that you're responsible for 
yourself and your own actions, and then to promote the truth, in my opinion, right? right? And there's so much truth out there that if you're not paying attention, it's because you're trying not to pay attention for whatever reason. You've got the Stockholm Syndrome, you're being abused, Mm -hmm. and now we're just getting used to it. So, you know, oh, it's okay. Uncle Sam's really has our best interest at heart. You know, it's all for the greater good. No. Yeah. You know. Or, Or how about this one, James? God's in control. That's right. another, yeah, the Christian, yeah, that says that we're looking for the straw man. Somebody's going to come and save us. Yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah, oh, we're all just going to get raptured out of here. I have a question that I'm going to answer on the Ooh. next Q&A. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll talk about it. Pre-tribulation, how. right? Yeah. We'll what? be gone. Pre, yeah, yeah, so we don't have to do anything. <laughs> not me. I'm not going to be here, right? So I'm just going to I'm just going to sit here and hold my post mm-hmm. and let all this roll on and I'm going to check out and that's right yeah. and I think that's I think that's a psyop too I think that that whole uh, maybe pre-tribulation rapture could have been because what that came from a different Bible what is it called that other Bible it's escaping me right now but yeah. I recently went back and, and spoke to my father actually about this and uh, yeah it could be kind of debunked that but you're right we've been so uh, domesticated as Christians to no longer kind of be warriors for Christ. Mm-hmm. We're kind of just, Oh yeah, God's in control. Everything's great. And rainbows, which is great. It's great to, you know, feel and share the love of Christ, but we got to be real. This is earth. This is the <coughs> wild West right yeah. here. And God's is- people, God's children have been slaughtered since the garden and it continues. Right. It has not stopped. That's right. So, you know, yeah, we could preach. We should, we could preach brother i mean right oh. so bottom line i would i would recommend people probably go down that rabbit hole of what the digital asset space is going to look like again i agree that you know the doge coin the bitcoin i think is a distraction go straight to the utility what has the most utility what do the central banks love and right now that's xrp even though the sec has uh filed that lawsuit for potentially selling an unregistered security and again that's just like when tesla got sued by the sec i think this is still a great opportunity for that yeah lots of <clears throat> lots of people get sued that are part of the part of the program you know i mean the some of the big banks you know these people that have uh it's been said oh they rule the world i don't want to mention names but up in wall street and they're moving to florida one of the largest mm-hmm. banking houses <clears throat> today it's like they you know, they go and raid countries. I think the last little country that they raided was Indonesia, made trillions of dollars, and then they get fined, you know, 500 million. million or a billion, even if, you know, mm-hmm. it's like they made that in 30 seconds, you know? Anyway. It's it's unreal. That's right. Yeah. All right. So um, how, how do you see, help me, you know, expand on how, you know, through your, your thinking and your research and what you believe to be, you know, upon us in the digital age, you know, you're still buying dividend paying whole life insurance. And I understand that, yes, there's most of the currency today is digital, right? They're just digits between the banks and, you know, who's walking around with, you know, cash today. You're not traveling with more than 10,000 in cash or 5,000 in cash or any, anything above a thousand, you know, you're all of a sudden because cash is dirty and it's illegal, you know, you must be drug running or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So how did you wrap your mind around Sure. So that still very much makes sense, even during this great reset time, for two reasons. I think number one is, again, once we are aware of our enemy, we're sort of obligated as God's children to to actively try to do everything to fight it. And number two is that, again, if the bank decides to keep my deposit willy-nilly and do a bail-in, right, a self-bailout with my deposit, Ultimately, I can go and, and take out a policy loan and still have access to some capital. It's a level of independence, sort of easing my way off the grid, even though I haven't built an extreme amount of value yet. Um, you know, it's kind of like getting some solar panels installed on your house, right? If a blackout occurs, you're going to be okay for at least, you know, a few hours. That's better than, again, getting wiped out immediately. So for me, it definitely makes sense to make that transition, even though I'm a little late in, in that we're going through this reset now, it still very much is beneficial. 
Well, and, and I agree with most of all that. You're not too late. You got to start where you're at. You, we all have yeah. to start where we're at. You know, we can all go online and see and hear these conversations about hundreds of thousands of dollars in premium and all these great examples. And it's like, listen, we all start too small. We all feel like we're too late. Um, but the future is completely unknown. But one thing that we should be aware of that your need for capital is not ever going to decrease. It has not decreased over your lifetime from a young man continuing. It's like you need access to more capital and it's not going to change just because you have a couple of birthdays or because you move from one, you know, state to another state or one country to another country. Um, you know, you, you we're all creative, you know, whether we, uh, suppress that or embrace it. Um, you know, our creativity and just if we just want to live life, it costs money to live life, right? right. If you want to, you know, give things away and help people be benevolent and altruistic, you know, all of that costs money. I'm not saying that money's the end of the end all to be all, you know, the love of money's the root of all evil, but, you know, money can buy an awful lot of comfort and do an awful lot of good, just like it can do an awful lot of bad. You know, it's like, right. it's just a tool. Money is just a tool and the medium of exchange. I mean, so it's okay to have so much dadgum money that you don't know what to do with it. And right? it's okay to be on the correct side of this largest wealth transfer. A lot of no, Christians yeah. I speak to feel guilty. Like, oh, isn't that taking part in this? Isn't that like, listen, you got to have the resources to bless people if you're going to bless people. And the Lord wants us to thrive and also wants us to seek wisdom. So if it's laid out right in front of us and so we can position ourselves to benefit and in turn bless others, you know, uh, then absolutely. You think God wants the bankers to be the sole winners of this wealth transfer? He doesn't. Well, if that's a question to me, let me answer it this way. <laughs> so, you know, because, you know, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, and, and uh, uh, I think most of the people who who listen at least regularly if they're a Christian or Christian leaning, um, they're faithful people. And, um, I think it's in Matthew. It's been in Matthew and John in different places, but you know, I think the modern day bankers are direct lineage, a direct lineage from the Pharisees and the Sadducees that Jesus Christ rebuked. Mm -hmm. My opinion. All right. Can I prove that? No, maybe not. You know, I mean, when you have the, uh, you know, 2,000 years of history of what man's done to his fellow man, it's hard to, you know, track some things. Right. But, Trace that. Yeah. yeah. But you can look and kind of pay attention and you can, you know, you can connect the dots. Right. I mean, so. Same thing is happening today, right? Like when was the only time Jesus flipped the table? And, you know, got visibly upset and, and you know, started breaking stuff, essentially, is yep. when he saw, what was it, the debt collectors, the yep. bankers? The money changers. That's right. The money. And if you think about that, you know, the money changers. Back then, um, the God's people had to come once a year. You know, even Rome required a, a census, but um, they had to come once a year. And, and, you know, they brought their tithes and their offerings and different things to the temples, right? Um, and the money changers were on the outside of the temple. As a matter of fact, I'm told that the root word of bank is bench because the money changers worked off of a bench. Hmm. Hmm. I think I've heard that before, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so the bankers were the money changers. They were the bankers of the day. So, yeah, nothing's changed. I mean, they've gotten nothing. more efficient. They've yes. gotten more greedy. Right. And they've become more successful. Um, in taking advantage of our ignorance and our slumber and our comfort. Right. So it's exactly it. And I want to be very clear too. what the Great Reset's goal is seems to be to create a two tier system. I mean, you, you look at the World Economic Forum website, which, by the way, if you go to that website, official World Economic Forum, go to the Great Reset tab, go to Partners. Ripple is there, listed as one of their partners. It's what? right in front of yes. I'm yes. shocked. I'm shocked. So they're partnered with the World Economic Forum to bring, usher in this, you know, boom, instant liquidity. It's essentially going to be the neutral bridge asset for every central bank payment. 
So it's going to, you know, if I send dollars somewhere, it's going to turn to XRP and then go turn back into pesos, you know, for the Philippines on the other side. Yeah. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. What's happened in, in the past and history has not changed. Same thing like the, uh, you said the Romans, the Romans, how they debased their currency to fund war, right? Started mixing their gold coins with a little bit of, you know, a little copper or something like that and deficit spend. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, the same fall of an empire. Mm -hmm. It's the same cycles that we're seeing today. Very same. I think that, uh, you know, before they, before they started debasing the metals, mixing the metals, they were clipping the edges. You know, today it's why we had the, right. the clipped the, the edges of the coin that are rough. And it's the same reason why some of the older corn, coinage, coinage, and maybe even some, I think, exist around the world, but they would put stamps on the, on the edge of a coin, you know, the king's name or the country's name. So if you clipped off the edge, you're, you, it's obvious. You know? Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting. And I think, too, I could be wrong, and I'm not a prognosticator. You know, I'm not a fortune teller, and I'm not a, you know, I don't predict the future. I try not to. Um, but we all have opinions, right? I think I wouldn't be surprised. I'll put it there. I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden – the uh, the COVID, and I, I know COVID is a real virus. I personally believe it was created and released on purpose. Whether you agree or disagree, it's okay. Um, I don't agree with the way they've shut down the economy and taken advantage of that created opportunity to kill people. There's no question. I've lost clients. I've lost colleagues. I've lost friends. So I'm not saying that the that COVID is not real. There is a real virus. It is uh, a scam in a hoax the way they have used it in my opinion right but as the the covid cases come down and the death rates come down i think the focus is going to be you know on this green energy yes. and turning green um so and it's all going to be promoted and the path is laid out and they talk about it they write about it you know klaus schwab but as you're going to that world economic forum website i mean the green agenda is real and that's why when people think that bitcoin which uses more electricity than argentina <laughs> from mar mining for is mining, going yeah. to be the chosen one you know what i mean it's it's simply not it, it's not going to in my opinion it's not going to survive that green agenda it uses one percent of the world's electricity alone well then that's you know that may be um but then what is really the green agenda? I mean, are they really concerned about the world's resources? You know what I no. mean? Yeah, right. They're concerned. They're concerned about uh, too many human resources. That's what. That's about. Uh, that's about it. It's a lot of humans. They don't like that. So, and I'm not a conspiracy guy, but have you heard of Deagle? Deagle dot com. No, I haven't. All right, and I'm just going to leave it here. But D E A G E L, I believe. Um. Whether their information is true, false, right, wrong, or indifferent, but okay, um, it'll be right up your alley, and maybe some of you others listening. All right, so just the infinite banking concept becoming uh, in more being in a position to be in more control of your money and your cash flows, and being in a position to take advantage of opportunities in times of change. I mean, I don't want to over summarize, but you know, is that about? That's exactly uh, it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Knowing that you're going to have access to something, yeah. you know, whether they want to shut things down or, you know, all of a sudden our bank cards don't work. Oh, what's going on? It's about having a, another option. That's exactly it. Yeah. So when you travel overseas, are you taking an instant out of my business? I'm just asking. Don't share anything that you don't want, <laughs> you know. But are you like taking a bunch of cash, taking a bunch of XRP, you taking a bunch of digital <sighs> currency, or are you leaving, you know, your cash at home? Definitely. You know, I'm taking everything. But taking also everything. I've been accumulating uh, physical silver um, a lot. Physical silver. That stuff weighs a lot, man. And if you're going to sure ship does. that overseas, I mean, woo. Yes, and I'm going to. So, <laughs> I just think it's too valuable not to. You look at uh, electric, you know, electric vehicles. What they're going to do with them? That takes an incredible amount of silver to to make. And I think the I checked, and the above ground supply of silver is less than gold. 
Yeah, I, I, like, I think wow. it costs more money to get silver out of the ground currently than it's trading or it's priced in bullion. And, you know, and mostly you know the silver mined is a uh, byproduct yeah. of you know they're mining copper or zinc or something. And oh, we found silver. Yeah, or how about cobalt? All the all the mining they have to do for those you know electric cars. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. All it right. is. Well, um, any parting wisdom you want to share with us, Jordan? I mean, I think I'm just I'm proud of you. I said it earlier. I'm proud for you. I think you're a very sharp young man and, and uh, you know, good job. I appreciate the opportunity to even um, work with you as a, as a client, as a friend, and I'm excited to see what you do in the future. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The last parting thing, it's been a lot of doom and gloom because – our future is uncertain. I want to part with some hope, and that is, Perfect. if you're listening to this, you're already doing well. You're going to make it through. Definitely look at this transfer as an opportunity, since wealth isn't created or destroyed, it's merely transferred. So it ain't uh, all doom and gloom. This is a wonderful opportunity that we can seize here now that we have so much access to capital and we can capitalize. Perfect. I wouldn't even want to add anything to that. So... <laughs> All right, thank you. So, what are you what are you shipping out? I don't know. The next uh, couple of weeks. Hopefully. Oh yeah, when you get your sofa. Yeah, yeah. Which, exactly. That has to be approved by some federal clerk somewhere, right? Somewhere. Yeah. I think it may even be the Italian government that that has to do it or something. I don't know. Hmm. Are they even open for business? I mean, are they showing up? Are they working from home? Or? I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. All right, Jordan. Listen, I appreciate you. Be careful on your endeavors and, um, you know, share with the world what you're discovering. Sure thing, James. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you for joining us on the Banking with Life podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content.